What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Welcome back to another video. In this quick one, I'll be showing you how to know if you've been compromised by the new Fracturizer virus that's been going through CurseForge and other websites. If you downloaded any mods recently, you may be compromised, but this video will tell you how to find out if you are, as well as how to deal with them. First of all, the virus hasn't gone through CurseForge, as one of the admins wasn't compromised or anything like that. Instead, it's been spreading through developer accounts for people posting mods on the website. It uploads a silent update. That people then download or it automatically is downloaded onto their servers and if you have a Windows or Linux PC you may be compromised if you're running any of these plugins here. This is the complete list of currently known samples and infected plugins. If you downloaded any of these plugins here from CurseForge, Dungeons Arise, Sky Villages, etc. or pause the video to read these, any of these mods from the Bucket website, then you are definitely compromised if you ran any of these here. Luna Pixel Studios seems to be the place that this came from. One of their developers or something got infected. It went through CurseForge by logging into their accounts and spreading things, etc. And it seems that it spread from one developer to another and eventually infected a whole bunch of plugins. But these are currently the only known infected plugins at this point. There could, of course, be more. But how do you know if you are compromised? Well, it's very simple. There are different stages of this virus. You'll find this article from Prism Launcher down below. Essentially, one of the steps in stage one of the malware, it attempts to drop a file into the following locations. If you're on Linux, it'll drop here or Windows here and essentially masquerades as Microsoft Edge on Windows. And on Linux, it just drops something into the system D folder. I assume so it runs every time your PC starts up, etc. Not to mention the same thing happens on Windows just by placing a short shortcut in the startup folder here. Obviously, you won't think Microsoft Edge is infected, and it's not. It's just masquerading as being Microsoft Edge, so people who aren't the wiser will just leave it running in the background while it collects information and does whatever it does. Now, instead of digging through these files yourself manually, there's an automated script for both Windows through PowerShell and a Linux script over here through Bash that you can run that'll tell you if you are compromised or if you aren't. For the automated script on Windows, simply scroll to this section here here. I'll have this hyperlinked so you can jump straight to it by clicking the automated script link in the description down below. Down below this is the Linux one. All you need to do is click download Windows script here. Then we'll save it and all you need to do is open your downloads folder, start an R, run this command here and then you should be able to run it automatically. They've made the process as simple as possible. So in our downloads folder we have check CFPS1 here which is just the code that we saw on the page previously. All we need to do is press start and R and inside of here paste in the command that we copied. So everything from PowerShell all the way to the closing quotation marks there. We'll click OK and just like that a window will pop up and tell us if something was found or something wasn't found. Now this should be pretty reliable as part of this particular virus does drop one of these files so assuming you don't find any of these files you're more than likely safe. And of course CurseForge have stopped any updates for this virus. They've apparently improved their systems and of course all of the compromised accounts have now either been locked out or have regained access and the mods that you can download from CurseForge should now all be clean. You can find the official CurseForge article down below as well, talking about what happened, how to know you, how to know if you're infected, and here they mention a detector tool, which you can also try instead. But assuming you've already run the PowerShell script, it's probably good enough. Their detector tool is open source, and of course was created just to do similar things to this PowerShell script here, just in a nice little interface like this. So you don't really need to worry about it again. But something you may find interesting is to detect if you have any dormant or other infected mods or jar files by simply downloading this tool here, the Overwolf Jar Infection Scanner, which you can also find the source code for on GitHub here, which searches for malicious files. I assume in the future it'll search for more than just Fracturizer, maybe it does already, but this is another tool that you can download to double check. All you need to do is open it up when it's done downloading. It's a zip file, so we'll need to extract this folder here somewhere like your desktop or of course your downloads folder and when you do you'll be able to open up the folder and run jar infection scanner.exe when it opens up you'll see this window here you can browse to a specific folder for which i'd recommend navigating to your mods folder so for example i'll click at the top percentage app data percentage slash dot minecraft and inside of here we should have a mods folder i'll select it and choose select folder just like that we'll click scan and if there are any infected files it'll tell you on the right hand side here so you can deal with them. Very simple. Scrolling down further, there's an updated list here, which I assume the Prism Launcher
launcher article is updated as well. These are the infected mods that are now fixed on CurseForge, most of them from Lunar Pixel Studios, these ones here, and these infected projects were taken down permanently. So once again, go through this list, pause the video, and see if you've downloaded any of these recently. They do say that a very, very small amount of users actually downloaded malware files, so it should mostly be safe. Everything's back up to a normal state. Just double check if you've got anything lying around your new PC showing that you're compromised. Now let's say that for some reason you did find an infected file, what do you do next? Well, what this malware does, if we have a look at the Fracturizer investigation GitHub page where this PowerShell script is actually hosted, there's tons of documentation. And in the docs folder here, we can learn about the timeline of how the virus worked, as well as a user's guide here telling us what to do. So how it worked and what was done in what order, scrolling down further, how to know if you have any files left over and what to do if you're infected. So first of all, they recommend backing up everything you don't want to lose onto a flash drive or external disk, which you should be doing anyway, and using a separate device, change all of your passwords for services that you were logged into on the old machine, Discord, email, etc. The malware did go through your browser, and if you have any passwords saved in your browser, they might have or likely have already all been sent to the attacker. So you'll need to change your password for every website you have the password saved in your browser for, including Chrome, Firefox, Opera, etc. You can use a password manager like Bitwarden, KeyPass, etc. It's always a good idea to have a unique password on each different website. And if you're resetting your passwords, this is a great time to go ahead and start doing that. If you're not already using two-factor, then it's a very good idea to enable it on all sites that support it. Though do note, some malware can grab your token as well, skipping through the need for two-factor. And if your machine is compromised, even if your account is protected by two-factor, if you are currently logged in at the time of running the virus, well, then you may have been compromised on those websites too. So change your password and that should deactivate any accounts that are currently logged into those services. Then if you'd like to or are able to, you can contact a professional service to run a proper diagnostic and find anything suspicious or of course just simply wipe and reinstall the system. I'd recommend doing this if you're very paranoid or of course if you have the time to, it's a very good thing to do. You can download the Windows 11 or Windows 10 ISO for which you'll find linked in the description down below and go through a clean install making sure nothing infected is left over. If you're not infected, there still are some steps that apply to us, such as understanding that this may not be accurate, the list of mods may not be complete, and of course you may still be compromised. So even if you downloaded different mods, it's still a good idea to check if you have any signs of this malware lying around. And of course, don't under any circumstances download or update any mods, mod packs, or plugins you use, or even run any that you downloaded and never ran before. Stick to instances you have already used and those only. Of course, that doesn't really work. People are going to download mods and play with them. If you really want to be safe, of course, don't use the internet. Is CurseForge hacked? No. Modrinth? No. Modrinth is just as safe as CurseForge. And of course, some information about antiviruses and things like that. At this point, I'm quite sure most major antiviruses will detect this malware as it has had some time to be detected since yesterday when this outbreak happened, though do note that things can of course change. So that's really that. In my previous video yesterday, I showed you downloading Sodium, etc. and a few other mods. Those mods I'm pretty sure aren't compromised, especially since some of them haven't been updated in a while. But of course, you can never be too safe or too certain. If you downloaded those mods and still want to check, you can. The PowerShell script is linked down below if you're on Windows, and of course the Bash script if you're on Linux as well. Anyways, that's about it for this quick video, so hopefully you found this useful. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.